Hello, welcome to This Week in Review for November 12th, 2010 on Green News TV. I'm Angelie Velasquez. In honor of Veterans Day yesterday, we would like to thank all of the veterans for their efforts and sacrifices they have made for our country. Our project of the week is the City of Campbell River City Hall Green Roof, built in 2009 in Campbell River, British Columbia, Canada. In 2009, the conventional roof on Campbell City Hall was nearing the end of its lifespan and this green roof would provide a change in traditional building design that could show the City of Campbell River's commitment to greening their municipal operations and promoting sustainable building practices. This project won a 2010 Federation of Canadian Municipalities Sustainable Communities Award in the Buildings category. It was funded 100% through the federal gas tax administered in British Columbia by the Community Works Fund, which can only be applied to buildings that contribute to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, cleaner water, or cleaner air. And this project meets all three criteria, as well as boasting social and financial benefits. To learn more about the City of Campbell River City Hall Green Roof, Click on our Project of the Week link on our homepage. Press release IGRA, the International Green Roof Association, announces the Green Roof Leadership Award 2010 for the New York Highline Park, a new elevated urban park. At a height of approximately 10 meters, it connects entire districts above all the traffic and provides splendid views and, at the same time, recreational spaces for adults and children. Many parties have contributed to the success of the project. The architects Diller, Scofidio, and Renfro, the landscape architects of James Corner Field Operations, the plant specialists Pete Oldolf, the green roof system supplier Zinco, and the installation company Kelco Landscaping, to name a few. By the way, the New York Highline Park will be a part of the 2011 Green Roofs and Walls of the World calendar that is currently in printing and will be available for purchase online next week. Press release, Green Roofs for Healthy Cities Award of Excellence winners are announced. Jeffrey L. Bruce, Chairman of Green Roofs for Healthy Cities, announced the winners in the lead up to the Cities Alive 8th Annual Green Roof and Wall Conference and Trade Show this November 30th through December 3rd in Vancouver, British Columbia. The awards will be presented at the conference at the Pan Pacific Vancouver Hotel on Thursday, December 2nd at the awards luncheon. You can visit www.greenroofs.org for more information. Also, if you want to see who won these awards, you can read the press release under the What's New section of our website. For our industry update this week, American Rivers and the Green Reserve, funding green infrastructure solutions. A new report issued by American Rivers analyzes how the $1.2 billion of green water infrastructure funding under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act has been spent. According to Putting Green to Work, Economic Recovery Investments for Clean and Reliable Water, demand for green infrastructure projects has never been higher. The report highlights case studies and makes recommendations for how to best leverage future spending for clean and reliable water. Of the 19 states studied for the report, Maryland stands out with the highest percentage of green projects at 64%. Other strong states include New York and Rhode Island, where over 40% of green reserve funded projects added elements such as wetlands, green roofs, and water efficiency to existing centralized water infrastructure. For more information on this report, you can visit the American Rivers website at www.americanrivers.org slash green funding. Daniel Silver of Free Office Search posted, Green Roof added to Liverpool office space development. St. Paul's Square has claimed a first for Liverpool offices with its new green sedum roof. Nick Summerfield, project leader for main contractor Shepherd Construction, said the sedum roof will improve the sustainability of the complex and make it a pleasant environment for workers. Ian Van Dale of the Eye Opener says, and the green gets greener. Ryerson is one of 20 Ontario universities looking to become greener and more sustainable. The Council of Ontario released their annual 
Going Greener report this week, which analyzes sustainability initiatives and what Ontario universities are doing to improve green ventures on campus, like measuring recycling, water efficiency upgrades, and purchasing criteria. Ryerson has won a number of sustainability awards in the past several years, including a Garden of Recognition Award earlier this year, a Bicycle Friendly Business Award in 2009, and three Ontario Waste Minimization Awards in the last five years. The university has been working to improve sustainability through initiatives like the Environmental Sustainability Certificate available through the Chang School and the green roof of the George Berry Engineering Building, an award-winning installation that covers 10,000 square feet of the roof. Shanti Minon of On Earth Magazine reports on Rooftop to Tabletop, Urban Farming Spreads Roots. She says rooftop farming is expanding into large-scale operations. 18 feet above Chicago City traffic, Mike Repkin stands in a plot of buckwheat farming. He's growing leafy bunches of kale and chard, stalks of wheat and oats, chubby potatoes, and sweet strawberries and deep-rooted rhubarb. He also grows Jerusalem artichokes for diabetes patients at the nearby community center, and basil to sell at the farmer's market across the street. People have been growing food on rooftop for decades, but in recent years, there has been larger and more ambitious efforts to turn rooftops into growing spaces. Spurred by a consumer demand for fresh local produce and aided by new technology, entrepreneurs across the country are leasing rooftop spaces for commercial agricultural operations in the heart of bustling cities. To learn more about these stories and new ones posted daily, go to our In the News news link section of our website. Do you have something green to say or show us? Well, send us an email with your articles, videos, or images to editor at greenews.com. Make sure to subscribe to our Green News TV channel on YouTube and stay in the know with everything GreenNews.com by following us on Twitter, liking us on Facebook, and being a part of our network on LinkedIn. This has been This Week in Review for November 12, 2010 on Green News TV. I'm Angelie Velasquez and I'll see you next week. This week's episode was sponsored by Zero Floor America. Simply Smarter Green Roofs. For more information, visit their website at www.zerofloora.com. This Week in Review is also sponsored by the Green News and Green Wells Directory, where you may find this company and many others listed, brought to you by greenroofs.com.